I guess it is recording. Excellent. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our MoxieWorks Hours Essentials session today. Uh, this session is on Moxie Engage, setting your preferences, although we are going to cover a lot more than that. Okay. Just kind of some preliminary preliminaries. My name is Alex Castro. I'll be your host. Um, I'm joined with our fellow team members from our engagement team, Angie Myers, Debbie Williams, Amy Chereau, who if you've heard from, and then I'm not sure if Brett's on the line, but all of us are going to be- Brett is on the line. Brett is on the house. Brett's in the I'm, house. I'm lurking in chat. He's lurking in chat. Very good. Um, we are a, a big team that can field any of your questions in chat. So as we go through this session, any questions that you have, feel free to type in chat or if you'd like, you know, write it down so you don't forget and you can uh, unmute yourself at the end of the call where we'll reserve the last 10 minutes for any live questions that you may have. Just a few FAQs, just to kind of set the ground rules and expectations for this class. Who is this class for? Our MoxieWorks hours, targeted for all agents, but we also recommend for leadership, managers, broker owners, admin, coaches, marketing personnel, recruiters, everybody at your office to attend because you never know when that one golden nugget is going to help you retain that agent, recruit that new agent, things of that sort. What are MoxieWorks hours? These are mo micro learning sessions to develop your skills in the MoxieWorks platform. We're going to teach you the how-tos of certain product functions, uh, share best practices, of course, open Q&A at the end, and also some announcements and some deadlines that you may or may not be aware of. What it's not, this session is not designed to be technical support. If you do have a question uh, regarding technical support, we do have our uh, standard protocol, which is support.moxieworks.com, which is also known as our success portal. Submit a ticket, and also each of each one of you on this uh, on the session should know your product champion, right? So your product champion should also uh, be getting up to speed very, very quickly on ways to help you in your endeavors for the uh, MoxieWorks platform. This is not intended to be an all-inclusive training session, okay? So some of you can say, what about this? What about that? Feel free to put that in chat. We can get back to you um, that way. If you'd like to uh, comment in our survey, which we'll have at the end, please uh, let us know what topics you'd like us to cover that would help you out. Uh, where we have a Zoom registration link, um, I think everybody knows that one. It's the same one that you can use to register for sessions through September. We don't have the classes listed yet, but uh, shortly we will have what the different topics are going to be included in, uh, from now until September. Everybody knows it's every other week, every Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So hopefully everybody understands that. Why do we have these, okay? Number one, to maximize your knowledge of the features and benefits of the entire suite of the MoxieWorks platform. We're talking about Moxie Present, Moxie Impress, Moxie Engage, Moxie Websites, okay? So that you can achieve and hopefully exceed your goals. How do we do this? Slides, live demo, prerequisites. Just wanna set the expectations that we can't start from scratch every week or every other week. So we expect that all of you on this call have attended your product launch training. And if you haven't, you wanna get that recording link from your leadership team, from your product champion, they should have your launch training uh, link for all the different modules and also uh, completed your e-learning sessions on your respective brand university portals. Great resource for you all that you all have access to your brand portals and you can get recordings, things of that nature from your brand university. Our agenda today is the same as every other week. We just covered the FAQs. We're gonna talk about a bunch of best practices, tips and tricks. We're gonna do some slides. I'm not sure if I can get into a demo. The slides, I, I put screenshots in there. So it's so simple that I don't wanna go back and forth if I don't have to, but I, I'm prepared to do that as well. Talk a little bit about support because some of you are new to the session. We just wanna make sure that you get the support that you need and open Q&A. 
What are we covering today? Of the four products that I mentioned of the suite for agents, we're going to talk about Engage, Moxie Engage, and a little bit about Moxie websites. Although our title of this session is Moxie Engage, setting your preferences, we're going to talk a little bit about Moxie websites, okay? Best practices. And I'm going to throw a bunch of material at you all. Please note that this session is being recorded. All registrants for this session, as like every other session that we have, all registrants receive a recording link as well as attachments via you know PDF files that are related to the topic, um, hyperlinks, things of that nature. So we know that you're all busy and you are all by being here today with us, you're an attendee or a participant in Zoom language, all registrants. So if you just register and don't attend, you will get a recording link. You'll be on our distribution list. Okay, so first, have you activated your Moxie Engage account? I know a number of you are probably brand new to the platform. That's why I kind of start off with this. Some of you say, okay, uh, let's, can we move on, Alex? But I just want to make sure that certain things are repeated because we just need everybody to get up to speed. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this, okay? So if not, please be aware that you will not be able to see your company or broker leads after a certain cutover date. That's why I bring it up. It's very important, right? It affects your leads. It affects your bottom line. It affects your business, okay? So although you may be able to accept a new lead today in your previous platform or your existing platform, you will not be able to see the new lead in Moxie Engage after that cutover date unless you have activated your Moxie Engage account. Very important. Would you, would, you, would you agree? Okay, so the pro tip, we highly recommend that you activate your Moxie Engage CRM sooner rather than later, especially after that cutover date. Okay, and please consult with your product champion. Hopefully, you know who that person is at your office. If you don't, please ask your broker owner, your manager, Who's our product champion? Because they should know all this. You may want to take note of this sunset date. So uh, you, different CRMs are applied to different people on this call. Sunset date, that's basically means the expected date when it should be going away or expected to be going away, right? Market leader, June 30th, which is what, next week? Business builder, end of the year, zap end of the year, sunset date, which is different from read only. Read only. Just want to make sure because this is huge, right? So Zap will become read only for all open enrollment companies 60 days after that data flow cutover date. Okay? Open enrollment group one, as well as early access companies, that date is September 9th. What does that mean exactly? That means, guess what? You cannot add contacts. Better yet, I have a chart. Zap read only FAQs. This is an unofficial list. I put unofficial because some of you say, well, Alex told us this on Moxie Works Hours. Unofficial, but pretty much almost, I would say almost fully baked, okay? So as you can see, there's a lot of things that you still can do, the yes column, I still can do when it becomes read only, right? Look, the majority of the, like, wow, well, wow, that's, that's a lot I could still do, but the no's are very important to note, okay? So log a call or send an email via zap. No, you cannot do that after that read only date. Perform any contact bulk actions, except bulk export, you can do that still. So you can't email, tag, status, uh, share mobile app, export, follow-up plan. You cannot create those. That's a no. Edit any contact information. That's a no. All the rest, as you can see, and you can take a picture of this, or you're gonna get a copy of this slide presentation as part of the recording link email. So you don't have to panic if you're not ready to take a picture of this. Any questions? Just wanna make sure any questions in the audience there, Angie or Debbie, that is relating to this, because this is important. 
No? Okay, I'll move on. Okay, so some of you just want to address, if you see leads that are disappearing in Zap, guess what? You need to activate your Moxie Engage account, and then you will find those new leads in Moxie Engage. They're not going to appear in Zap anymore after that leads cut over date. Does that make sense? So any new lead that you get will be found in Moxie Engage, not your old system. Just want to make sure that's clear. And here is the information that I share every MoxieWorks hours. For new broker company leads, that number you want to store on your phone. You want to make sure you safe sender list or include this on your safe sender list in your email so that you don't miss leads, new leads. These are different. This is different contact information from your old system. Okay, so I just want to make sure you're going to get an offer phone call. And then this is what you're going to get, right? You have a new lead. To confirm this is not a voicemail, you press one. That's a phone call you're going to get. You're going to get text message. It's going to look like this from that phone number that I just highlighted a slide ago or two slides ago. The email confirmation. Okay. And just a little highlight, you must contact and report back on this lead, which can be done by entering lead engagement details in your CRM, such as Moxie Engage. Okay, very important. So those of you who are wondering, okay, what do these leads look like in Moxie Engage, right? This is what it looks like when you don't have a new broker or company lead. So there's no new people, but when you get a company or broker lead, a new one, right here at the bottom, you can see the red highlight. Also, action needed. So Moxie Engage is pretty good. It's excellent actually at saying, okay, this is what you need to work on today. Action needed, there's that new lead that we get, okay? Again, reminder, there's that phone number, there's that email, you wanna make sure you highlight those, put a special ringtone on your phone with that 903-294-4442 number so that you don't miss any leads. Okay, so I just want to make sure everybody is sending or doing those faves and saves, those property searches for their customers. Yes, hopefully everybody is doing that these days because why? This is what your customers are going to be receiving on a ongoing basis if you do a saved search for them. You set that up, set them up in Moxie Engage. And that's a separate Moxie Works Hours class. But I just want to make sure, reminder that this best practice to stay top of mind with your sphere of influence. Yes. So even when there's no new listings, guess what? Your customers receive a email from you automatically. And yet you are basically setting it and forgetting it. And your customers are getting emailed without you even remembering. Okay. And then guess what? Look, when there's new listings, new listings, everybody wants to open up those emails and they're from <clears> you. <throat> okay. We do have a, um, a quick hyperlink that we will include in the support documentation that will include the um, recording link so that you can get right to this and kind of refresh your memory. Okay. Really quick testimonials versus customer reviews. Okay. So just real quick. Because what I'm going about to show you is going to help out a lot of people because we get emails about this from agents all the time. Yes. So customer testimonials versus customer reviews. Some of you, okay, what is even the difference, Alex? Typically, I'm just saying typically, I'm not saying this is a rule. Customer testimonials are usually always positive, usually longer. Okay. Customer reviews, sometimes you see those Yelp reviews, right, with the stars the five stars, four stars, what have you. And sometimes it could be negative, yes? All right, so what are we talking about today? Options to migrate reviews to your Moxie websites because some of you have them in Yelp. Some of you have them in Zillow. Some of you have them in Zap. Some of you have them in some other platform, uh, Real Satisfied. And I'm gonna show you your options and you could take your pick and apply them according to your situation. Okay, number one, you can add them manually 
versus the testimonial page in Moxie Engage, or Moxie websites, excuse me. That's built in. And I'm going to go over a screenshot and say, okay, people are saying, why? How are we doing this, Alex? Secondly, second option, use testimonial tree widget. What's that? That requires a separate third party account. Okay, and you can see there's hyperlinks included in our success portal at the support.moxyworks.com that will tell you exactly how to do these or how to implement these, yeah? And number three, which some of you may or may not have thought about, take photos or screenshots of the reviews, your current reviews, whether it be Zap, for example, and create custom pages within Moxie website so you can display them and not have them go to waste. Make sense? So just to be clear, there are no automated migration from a Zap or Business Builder website to a Moxie website. That does not exist. Copy and paste, we can do. Copy that content that you spent you know, some time investing in copy and paste it into a Moxie website. Chances are a Moxie website is gonna have a lot more functionality and features that you can leverage. So a little bit deeper dive, but those are the three options that I, at least I came up with and maybe uh, the rest of the team on the call can chime in and say, Alex, what about this other one? Okay, but here, testimonial page. Screenshot from your Moxie websites when you're designing it, adding pages, okay? So all you have to do site pages and you say i want to do a new add new testimonial page pretty easy right all you have to do here and then this is the next screen but what's so key about this you enter the header you enter the content and that to some of you is a beautiful thing right i could copy and paste as you can see in the highlight i can copy and paste the headline header whatever I want, even if the customer may not have said that exactly. Okay, so some people, why, why did I emphasize that? Because some people say, ah, oh, testimonials, those could be doctored, those can be manipulated. So they're not as real as a review because reviews can be negative. Make sense? So just kind of saying and putting it out there, but in Moxie websites, you have this little checkbox right here. If the content or images above contain the name or other identifying details of any person living or deceased, I confirm that I have obtained written permission from that person to use their name and identity as required by the terms of use. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm just saying, those of you who have, and I'm just using Zap because I think uh, maybe a number of you have Zap websites, those testimonials, copy from Zap, paste it into Moxie website. There is, again, a reminder, there is no migration, like it's going to automatically take this website, boom, populate my Moxie website. Testimonial tree page. Italicize this because it's different. So you can see in this example, testimonial page, which is what we just talked about, testimonial tree page. This is that third party ad. You got to create that account. You just type in testimonial tree in Google and then you can read all about it. But there's a widget that you can add to Moxie websites that you can activate this a lot more. The, thing, the beauty about Moxie platform is that they, you can plug in different things that is just opens up a world of more power. That's testimonial tree page. All you have to do is that uh, once you um, create your account. And number three, some of you are very interested in this, existing Zap websites. Okay, so uh, Alex, this agent, Virginia, I met her quite some time ago in Arizona. She has 210 Zap reviews that are basically going to go away December 31st, 2022, because that's when it sunsets. Is, are those going to be wasted? Well, it's up to you. 
because star reviews can be negative. Hopefully they're all positive. You can see even though uh, Virginia is a top agent, she doesn't have a perfect five stars, which some people will say, oh, okay, that's, that's real reviews. Make sense? So what are we gonna do? How do we migrate them over to Zap? I mean, to Moxie Engage, excuse me, Moxie Websites. Okay, so what I did is I took a snapshot or a screenshot or a photo of this top part of the screen. I took a second screenshot of this second half of the screen. Why? Because I couldn't fit it all when I'm viewing it on my screen. Does that make sense? Because I want to preserve this information. This is great information for my new Moxie website. Then what do I do? I'm going to recreate those Zap star reviews because, gosh, I have 210 of them. <laughs> and I'm just going to easily paste them as a photo or an image in, you can recognize this interface, right? The Moxie website site page creation. I'm just creating a custom page. That's what you want to take notes on. Create a custom page and I'm just adding a photo, right? I'm inserting a picture. Does that make sense? Just want to make sure that everybody's tracking with me because we get questions all the time regarding this. And that's why I'm, I use the MoxieWorks hours to address the cur right, what's currently trending in our email inbox, right? So here's the top half of that first screenshot, right? Remember I took it in two pieces and then here's that bottom half. And then the final result is this, it looks seamless. And there's a scroll bar on the side that because it doesn't fit on the one page, I can scroll down as if it was the original thing from Zap. Does that make sense? Any questions? And you can see what I did here on my um, title bar, I'm not sure, Moxie bar, I think it's called, Zap Reviews Demo. That makes sense? I just created that so I can show you all how it, you're preserving all that hard work because there is no migration, remember. And then you can see the testimonials. That's the standard manual entry of testimonials using what's given to you automatically by Moxie websites. You can add by copying and pasting those headers and you can even add photos to those testimonials. How cool is that? Any questions? Yes, okay. Alex, yes. Uh, Teresa. Teresa, yes. yes. Um, how can they connect or can they connect their Zillow so that those, those testimonials update regularly? Uh, uh, and Brett, maybe you could chime in on this because I'm not too versed on this, but there's, a, I think, a Zillow widget, right, Brett, where you can add that and automatic the interfaces, but I'll, I'll let Brett kind of maybe handle that question. Before yeah, there's a Zillow widget for um, leads. Um, in terms of reviews, uh, it's a different process, and I'll, and I'll go ahead and put a link in the chat for that. Perfect. Yeah, and, then, and, and that's a great question, Teresa, and I apologize for not knowing that, but here's one thing that might help. Here's a final result of a Moxie website, yes? Using existing website, and I'm not sure if the Zillow would be the same, but this is real satisfied. So I know a number of you, hey Alex, what about real satisfied? Does Moxie tie in with that? Well, look what I did. I added a real satisfied tab in my Moxie bar. And guess what? I, I'm using iframe. So if you need to go deeper into this, you can go iframe into uh, in Moxie websites in your success portal, support.moxieworks.com. And automatically you're going to say, oh, wow, I can just get that link and embed that hyperlink into an iframe. And then I can display another website such as Real Satisfied Reviews on my Moxie website. That's awesome. 
So you can see here, I have zap reviews. You don't title it zap, right? You can just say reviews. I just did it for my demo purposes. So you know, you got the built-in Moxie website testimonials. And then you have some other third-party um, platforms such as Real Satisfied that you can add. And why not have different reviews? Because people are leaving reviews in Zillow, Zap, Yelp, and you have them all over the place. Why not include them on your Moxie website? That would be a great best practice because those people are your raving fans. You want to highlight those and make those easy for people to find. Yes? So I just wanted to highlight that. And I know this wasn't our topic of today, but I thought it would be great kind of a good conversation at least. And hopefully everybody got a few nuggets out of that. Yes? Next topic. And I just wanted to highlight this because this in a big call that we had yesterday, neighborhood news came up so frequently as the golden nugget in Moxie Works platform. And if you're not using this, and I talk about this every other week with you all, if you're not using this, you should. And if you're using it, or everybody in your contact list, all your sphere, all your leads, subscribed to this because there are so many success stories just on this one set it and forget it type feature in Moxie, uh, Moxie Works platform, okay? In fact, you can check the open rate. And in fact, one of the guest speakers on that call yesterday, she quoted, 80% open rate on her neighborhood news, 80%. So if you want that kind of open rate and you want that kind of top of mind awareness with your sphere, with your 2000 people in your Moxie uh, engaged CRM, you want to take advantage and leverage the neighborhood news feature because Everybody talked about it, all these power users on the call yesterday, okay? That was her open rate, 80%. My open rate in my demo system, I have zero because we just don't use it. We just started this new demo uh, account. Any questions? I just want to highlight that because it's huge. It's huge, it's huge, it's huge. I want to remind you, if you're not taking advantage of this, I don't know what to say, right? This is probably the top feature in MoxieWorks that you can use with little effort and with great upside in terms of potential return on investment. Enough about that. You guys get the hint. Moxie Engage, setting your preferences. So now, we are talking about what we uh, were scheduled to talk about. Setting your preferences. Okay, so there's different things that you can do to set up your preferences in Moxie Engage so that it can work for you. And some of you may have already set these, but some of you, the purpose is, is to, oh, okay, I didn't know that, to make sure that you are setting your preferences according to how you do business. Yeah, so there's different things that the engaged settings will allow you to do, right? Number one, manage your lead providers and automation, edit your transaction tasks or your transaction, or transaction manager or your task manager. Number three, manage your special date preferences for those birthdays, anniversaries, house anniversaries, right? Some of you are saying, yeah, I want, I want to make sure I send those out. But if you haven't set your preferences, you may not be sending those out. At least auto automatically, you're not. Manage your unsubscribed email notifications. Ooh, I want to know about who's unsubscribed because that could be a, an opportunity for me to call that person or you know, re-engage with that person. Manage your subscription settings. And we're going to also talk about generate neighborhood news and listing announcements, sign up widgets, and links. To access your engage preferences. Very easy. It's on that gear icon, right? That little sprocket icon. 
Hopefully everybody's seen it. And then all you have to do is click on engage settings. I mean, I could show you live, but I think this is just as effective, right? That gear setting, everybody see that right here? And engage settings. Okay, number one, I'm just gonna go down the list, right? See the navigation on the left-hand side? I'm just gonna go down the list to make sure that you guys are all aware of the different options. Yeah. So here I'm going to click on leads and then, right, you can see this. I'm, uh, I'm not going to go into this, the Zillow Tech Connect, but this is where you can turn on and modify your different response emails. Yes. So I'm going to go to the auto response next screen. And then when you click on this off if you click on it it'll turn on and then when you do that you get a chance to modify the message that makes sense so if yours is like this i think defaults are off you want to make sure you take a look at those does that make sense so new leads are added new leads that are added to your database will receive a branded email from you letting them know you'll reach out to them soon. This gives you time to research the lead and come back to them fully prepared. So if this is off, nothing is sent out. So to turn it on, you just click on that and then here's your auto response email. Any question? You can see here's the subject and all the verbiage. Pretty simple. The next one are the marketing plans where you can use the task manager to change your marketing plans and your sales plans. Just make sure that you understand that there's marketing plans, sales plans. So under marketing plans, you have your leads marketing plan, your marketing plan. Sales plans, you have buyer and seller plans. What do I need to know about that, Alex? So if you click on customize, all right, customize over here on the right. If you click on that, you can adjust the due day number. What does that mean? You can't like specify a date per se, but in 14 days or two weeks, send this email out, Moxie Engage. <laughs> that makes sense. Also, you can see these red X's on the side and you can see the, not the grayed out X. That means you cannot delete this from the plan. But the red X's, you will say remove from plan. Okay. So this is the task manager part of your preferences. A lot of you are interested in the special dates. So in special dates, we have birthdays, anniversaries, house anniversaries. Yeah. So we're gonna take each one of those separately. So here under birth dates, right? You can change that default message. You can make sure that you're gonna be reminded via your calendar in one day, two days prior, make sense? Three days prior to that actual event. You can see before event. So you want to set these on so that you are kind of alerted so that you could say, hey, just want to wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be automatic by the default message. Any questions on that? So here at auto add, turn this on and we'll automatically add an event to your calendar for all your people with this special date on their profile. Are you kidding me? That's pretty easy. I want to turn that on because I want my calendar to remind me when an event's coming up. 
right? So if this is on the off position, like this, off, off, you have no such feature. Moxie Engage is not alerting you. Okay, and I believe they're all turned off. Is that right, Brett? If you could confirm that by default. Anniversaries, different from house anniversaries. Anniversaries, right? So you want to you turn those on, right? As well, you can see the default message. How many days prior to the event? Pretty easy to set up, right? And but like, wow, this is great. Auto add, turn this on and we'll automatically add an event to your calendar for all your people with this special date on their profiles. And the last one, house anniversaries. Again, turn this on with the number of dates before the event, automatically add, pretty easy. But very, very powerful, right? So if you're not taking advantage of this, you know, you're, you're not maximizing the, your use of Moxie Engage, right? To touch and keep top of mind with your sphere of influence. And it makes it easy on you if you just activate certain preferences in your Moxie Engage setup. Emails, same thing. Keep track of everything, right? So unsubscribes. Yes, I want people, I want to know when my neighborhood news, uh, when people unsubscribe to that, right? What? I, I need to know. So that gives me a chance to maybe re-engage by making that phone call. Hey, I just want to understand what was going on with you type of thing. Okay, here's neighborhood news. Uh, we can use this to uh, change the message. We can edit the actual message that goes out. You can see, welcome to my personal neighborhood news report. Okay, remember this is a monthly report based on zip code, but you can be more customized if you'd like later to adjust that, you know, the scope or the, the parameters of that neighborhood news going out to that particular person. Neighborhood news, separate Moxie Works hours topic, okay? But when you click on create link, click, right? And I could do also create widget, click. You see all this information. Here's a link, here's the widget, and then you can use these links as part of a website, a presentation, an email, virtually anywhere that you could think of that when they click on that link, guess what? Boom, neighborhood news widget pops up. You can put this in Moxie present presentation, your website, your um, signature on your email. How about that? Maybe don't copy and just paste it as is, but you create that hyperlink to make it more user-friendly, right? Like click here to sign up for my, you know, my special neighborhood news newsletter or updates, neighborhood news updates. Make sense? And same thing for the widget. All this uh, HTML language, you can copy that and paste it accordingly. Listing announcements, a little bit different, right? These are uh, just listed, just sold emails. Now, when should I use this, Alex? Probably for everything, right? Just listed, you want everybody in your sphere, everybody, your people to know when you just listed a property, I would think. Just sold, we wanna make sure that Everybody knows when I sold a property, yeah? I, I remember, uh, and then one of, one of our affiliates reminded me of this, or actually one of our uh, brand partners reminded me, because Alex, you know, I still have that one time when you gave that one session, I still have a sticky note right on my computer of one compelling thing that you said. And that question is, and I want everybody to answer, what's the worst question that one of your sphere of person in your sphere of influence 
somebody that you know, a referral partner, a relative, a friend, what's the worst real estate related question they can ask you? Anybody? You can chime in, you can unmute yourself if you like. What's the worst question they could possibly ask you that would make you feel like, oh. Are, are you, you still, still a working agent? Are you still in the business? Are you still in real estate? Make sense? That means what? You are not marketing. You're not doing those just listed. You're not sending out those just souls. Why? Because I don't hear from you. I didn't know. I just listed, right? There's, and then the next, next comment is, I just listed my house with so-and-so, right? Just listed, just sold. Hopefully, well, the neighborhood news, all of these things that Moxie Engage does will hopefully not cause that conversation to happen next time you're at Starbucks. <laughs> Make sense? Because believe me, I've heard it and you know I use that one. What's the worst question? And some of you who are uh, managers or product <laughs> champions on this call, ask your agents. What's the worst possible question somebody has? And if they, right, if they don't know, they haven't felt it. And when they do feel it, it's like, oh, that hurts, right? So you can do this by, you can edit these just sold, just listed, just sold buyer and seller messages very easily, right? You could change the message. You can set, reset it to the company message, but just wanted to highlight these. Safe searches, right? Same thing, you can edit. And just make sure you set it to your way of speaking, to your tone and humor or whatever approach you have with your customers, yes? So just wanted to highlight those. Those are your preferences. Do you have any questions? And to our uh, other members of our engagement team, Brett, Angie, Amy, Debbie, did I forget anything that you'd like to add and maybe elaborate on? And then, or just bring up any questions that uh, maybe a, a, a common theme in our chat message. That'd be great. Uh, chat, chat. Hey, uh, Alex. As well. Yes. <laughs> it's Debbie. Yeah, a couple things in chat. It's been a really robust chat and I, we love these questions. Keep them coming. Um, there's a couple to zero in on if you have a moment. Um, one question from Shay, um, just so you can clarify, when you were kind of reviewing how to copy and paste maybe testimonials and reviews that have previously been posted, um, you are not you are not in any way recommending that they change anything with those testimonials. Mm -hmm. um, it would be unethical, of course, to make changes. You were just showing how to get those same reviews onto. Yeah, yeah. And just to be clear, I showed you two, well, a number of methods, right? But just to be clear, if you're talking Zap, Zap, you have testimonials that you can copy the text straight from Zap copy the text and paste it to the testimonials page in Moxie websites. Easy peasy, text for text. Whether or not you manipulate the words and change it, that's all on you, right? But you can see what there's, there's a little checkbox that Moxie works, right? You did, did this person, right? If you're using a person's name, you want, they want you to like be ethical. Make sense? Reviews. There's no way to copy that review and put that five star on your website in Moxie website. There's no way other than take a picture, a screenshot, a snipping, snipping tool, snag it, save that as a photo on your desktop. And then in Moxie, web, uh, Moxie websites, you're able to import that photo and use it as part of building your custom page <clears throat> from there you're not there's no way to really alter the tech i mean i i'm sure you can photoshop and all that because but you're just taking an image pasting that photo of the five stars into your moxie web there is no chance of changing anything right other than size and whatever 
hopefully that's clear. Did I answer that question, Debbie? Hopefully I that think makes so. sense. Hopefully that yeah, makes I think sense. So. Yeah, I think and so. And I just, I just wanted, to, I just yeah. wanted to make sure that everybody understood, right? Testimonials, the ones in Moxie websites, right? Moxie websites asking you, what do you want to add? Type it in here. What picture you want to associate with that testimonial? Add it in here. There's, it's not coming from the customer per se. Maybe they wrote you a letter or an email or you asked them, hey, can you write me something that I could add to my website, right? And then you copy and paste that email. But I'm just saying, testimonials, you're adding it with your entering it on the keyboard. When you're doing copy and paste a picture from another website, let's say your Zap website that includes the stars, you cannot reproduce those stars. It's a picture now. It's a screenshot. Alex, yeah, you're getting positive comments back on that. So thank you so much. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I know that kind of deviated from our normal topic, but I thought it was just so important because people are, you know, emailing us about it. So I just added it and I, you know, I should put, we should amend our, uh, in our library, Debbie, that this includes it because it, it, it's like almost half of the session almost, right? So Alex, I mean, I think, I think you're really showing how flexible they are on their Moxie website, how much flexibility they have to add content. It's amazing. Your Moxie website, for those Zap users out there, Moxie website surpasses what you could do on your Zap website. Oh. But, but you do want to take some of that valuable stuff that you've accumulated, like reviews, also, Alex, property insights and agent insights yeah. was oh, a yeah. Zap thing. Like, we've got a couple questions about that. If you can quickly give some suggestions, yeah, I, I told them just create that. a custom page and add some of that stuff in. I, I forgot all about that, right? So hopefully you put two and two together, right? Where, oh, you mean anything on, a, on somewhere that I have content-wise, I could take a picture and include it as a picture in my Moxie website? Yes including my favorite property insights. Some of you whose offices I visited, I, that was my favorite thing. And now guess what? It's all going away December 31st, unless you preserve it somehow. How are you gonna preserve it? Take a picture and include it as a tab, as a new site page, new site custom page on your Moxie website and just put them all like, and then you can show, look, Mr. And Mrs. Customer, look at all the properties I visited. It was in your nicely laid out in uh, Zap. How do I, you know, take a, at least snapshots and put in Moxie website, create a custom page, you know, take screenshots and add all those pictures one after the other. And they can scroll through. On, their, on your Moxie website. Oh gosh, you've been to a lot of properties. Yes, I have, <laughs> Mr. Mrs. Customer. So yeah, you, you want to take advantage of, because a big question is how do, you know, I have all this content, how do I put it over? If it's text and you can recreate it a better way in Moxie websites, absolutely take advantage of the new Moxie website power. But if it's something that, well, Property Insights, Moxie websites doesn't have that. My quick, alternative is take pictures of it and just display it as a picture in Moxie. They have no idea. They're not going to have, they're not going to be able to click okay. on the property. Yeah. So uh, other questions? I'm not sure if Teresa wants to unmute. It seems like she does have a question about CSV files and uploading contacts. Yeah, absolutely. Teresa? Maybe she can't unmute. So I'm sorry. There you are. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had a question on the CSV files. Yes. Because all the agents are using besides Zap different CRMs. Yes. And I downloaded the one that they suggested uh, for we're using Gmail. So we yes. used the Google one. Yes. But then I had to download the one for Outlook and use that one instead. And I thought, well, let me compare the fields. Yes. Which was our, our biggest issue in trying to line them all up. Yes. And when I exported them from Moxie, after I got them all in, 
I decided, let me export Moxies and see what I get back on feedback from them in a CSV file. And it was completely different, the fields and the lineup than what I used to put the, eight, the CRM in in the first place. Can I use the Moxie CSV that I downloaded as a format to upload so that now I have the house anniversaries and the birthdays and all of those other things that line up with Moxie but weren't on the Outlook CSV recommendation or the Google recommendation? That's a great question. Uh, Brett, do you want to chime in on that one? Yes, you can do that. That's actually what you should do for the cleanest upload is <clears throat> wherever you're downloading a, uh, Excel from or your contacts from, uh, <clears throat> unless you're using the migration from Zap, uh, you're usually best off to have <clears throat> our CSV downloaded and then just copy and paste columns to match. So that way everything is matched up within, uh, within that Moxie CSV file. And then when you upload it, everything will be where it right. should be. Okay, but just just to be clear, just to be clear, there's a Gmail version of the CSV template. There's a there's just a CSV. There's just it's one file. It's a CSV file. There's actually several. There's two. Right. But, yeah. Uh, I was talking about how Moxie works support. help. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, let let us get back to you on that because I I, I know exactly what you're talking about. That you know, in out the Outlook. CSV file has X number of fields and they're different. When you look at the Gmail template on the support.moxworks.com, it has, I think maybe more fields. I'm not sure which one has more that has a different template. And then yeah. there's that version that you're saying that when you export from Moxie, it's a different template altogether, right? So right. let us get back to you on that to, to confirm, right? If yeah, I put a link in for the one that we've, we most commonly tell people to use. Okay. Um, and then, and, if and there's, may, yeah. yeah, and maybe we'll we'll use that as one of our topics for next time because that that's a great great question when you're migrating data and what should you use and how do I yeah. do that? Because I want to give my agents the right one to use, and I'm thinking if if the one that I got from exporting the Moxie leads that I put in. If I, I just don't know how to upload that one, it doesn't give me that option. It gives me either Google or Outlook to upload. And I want to upload the one that Moxie is actually using. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we're going to take that one. That's a great, great question. Because, yeah, there, there's so much background information that relates to that. But yes, thank you. I'm going to also make a note of that. And Debbie, if you can kind of also, Debbie's better at keeping track of all these things. So, uh, Teresa. And thank you. I, I appreciate CSV, all the, the tips you're giving us. Moxie CSV template. OK, other questions, folks? Feel free to unmute. We have seven minutes. Otherwise, I'm going to have to keep on talking, but I'd rather have you guys chime okay. in. I have another question then. Of, of course. It's about the website. When we yeah. activate the agent's website in Moxie, uh, I know they replied that the other website from Zap is still there. Yes. Is there a way for them to turn that off or disengage it so that people going to that site will now go to their new one? Yeah, so, well, it, that depends, right? So if they're just using their Zap link, to get to that website, then you just got to tell them, here's my new link. Right. But if they have TeresaSellsHomes.com, sending them to the Zap website, your, your vanity URL that you purchased from GoDaddy, then you say, okay, Mox, uh, uh, Moxie and Gay, uh, my Moxie website, use this vanity URL to now uh, send people to my new website. Yeah, and there's a whole hyper. Uh, there's a whole uh thing in support.moxyworks.com on step by step on how you do that. To, I think uh, we've we've kind of mastered that. Okay, I just want to make sure that. Um, how do they disengage in the zap side? Yeah, 
I don't want their, I don't want, uh, if they've given out that zap Link. Um, address. Oh. Can, how, how do we get zap? to now see the Moxie website rather than their Zap. Well, Zap, Zap, you cannot say, if they type in this, go go send them to the um, Moxie website. Can't do that. I think other other than short of changing your about me statement, put maybe a hyperlink into your Zap page and say, hey, go here type of thing. Here's my new website. Yeah. Right? Maybe that's an easy one. You really can't turn it off per se or, oh, I know. And one, one, one way you can do it, and my, my Zap knowledge is slowly coming back a little bit. So you're the Zap specialist at your office, whether it's you, right. Teresa, you, yeah. can, you can disable the website for an agent where oh, it just okay. doesn't, doesn't even show up. They're not found. All right. So under your admins uh, sign in, you can, Right, look for the agent and then there's like a toggle switch. Click, okay. dis disable website. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. And another thing that um, I'm, I'm seeing too that I would recommend to do is once you get the, uh, once you're set up on your website, you're comfortable with however it looks. Um, and yes, you start bringing everybody over. So on an agent standpoint, it gives them a great kind of segue to this new technology, having a phone call, a message, hey, I'm getting you set up on this, on my new website. It's so much better. Well, I don't mean to say better. I don't think I'm allowed to say that or not, whatever. But you, you know, it's a great talking point to the agent or to the client to say, hey, I'm going to set you up on this. So you can start turning them off on the, alt and you need to like have everything turned off because you're going to have follow-up plans, you're going to have campaigns. So as you're turning them on, into Moxie, turning them off and, and zap, and then making some communication with them to let them know kind of what's happening. And then the last thing that I'm kind of telling all the agents, because, you know, when you come on board and you go into Dash and you put like, they put a website down for you in Dash, it's your Moxie, it's your zap website. And so when you're done with your Moxie website, if you are not going back into Dash and changing that to your um, Moxie website, that's what's getting pushed into Moxie. So like I can go to my website when it says contact me, even on my website, if I don't change this, it will actually give them a link to my Zap website if you don't change it in Dash. So I need to change it in Dash Does that make sense? Well? Oh, that's really good. That's really Does good. Does that make sense? Jenny. So literally when I have an agent that's ready to go, they send us their URL for their Moxie website and we go into Dash and actually update that in Dash because that's what populates like even on your present, you send a presentation, you click on the picture and it says website. If you don't go into Dash and change it, it's going to continue to send people to, to Zap. Oh, that's great to know. Cause I had, we didn't have that. We've been meeting with every agent personally and sitting down and going together to connect their websites. Yeah, and very turn good. Turn them on. That's Yeah, so that's... if you don't see it and, and they may never click on the connect with me and click this right here. Um, but definitely, like, I, I just ran into it. I'm like, this is weird because I see people posting things and then all of a sudden I click on a link and it goes to Zap. Yeah. But it's some of Moxie's No, that's stuff a really, that doing, so. really okay, good one. Okay, thank you so much. I'll, I'll get that's into a, that's that. That's a golden that's nugget it. right there, Jimmy. Awesome. Thank you for <clears> including <throat> that. We'll, we'll probably highlight that next time. Yeah, Alex, I posted something in Zap. Just want everybody to read it. Just those of you that with agents using Zap and their Zap website, they really should find out who's logging into their Zap website before turning anything off or, you know, redirecting. There is a filter in Zap and every agent can find out and they will be shocked to see people they didn't even know were logging into their website if yeah. they use that filter. Like that's something I would absolutely do. I don't want to lose those people who are connected to me. Yeah. And then also get, uh, adding to what Jimmy mentioned, one spin or script that you may want to use, and this is taking from our friends up in the north e or Northwest, is Mr. And Mrs. Customer, what do you think about my new website? Right type of thing, approach versus, oh, I'm switching you over to my new website and this, uh, you know, here are our features. First, can you give me some new feedback before I really roll out my, my new website? Just so that they, you get some engagement with them maybe more uh, top of mind awareness with them, things like that. So just- Yeah, that's what we've been doing is telling people to um, send, 
send a link to their website to every single person they know, friends, family, clients, previous, past, whatever, and highlight the neighborhood news and ask them if they have any feedback on what they can add to their site or what they might be able to change, more or less inviting them to, you know, kind of critique the site. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Getting their feedback. Right. Everybody wants everybody has an opinion on things. But yeah, yeah. getting their feedback is great. And you're valuing their feedback. Uh, that brings us to the top of the hour, folks. OK, hopefully you all had a chance to uh, capture some good information. Uh, we will be sure to add the next topics um, very shortly to the um, sign up link for our next Zoom calls through September. But in the meantime, thank you all. Thank you, uh, Brett, Angie, Debbie, Amy, for helping out on the chat. Thank you, Jimmy, for always chiming in and for Teresa for the great questions. Thank you all, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you very much, and be safe out there. Take care. Oh, gosh, we forgot the, record, uh, the survey. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully. Yep, I put it in there, but oh, you good. Well, but you were so fast. Like, I don't know that I'm people so caught sorry. it. I totally <laughs> If anybody's it. still on the call, yeah, please, please give us feedback. <laughs> oh, I wanted God, to get totally. in as many questions as, and answers as possible. <laughs> yes, Angie, <laughs> I couldn't get it in there fast enough. Oh, uh, God, I totally let's forget. Let's see if I can put I'm it gonna, in here. I'm going to put, I'm going to put that. Alex is all about getting in. answers. I'm going to put that reminder in the slides earlier. Dude, it's not forget. even the right link. Look how terrible I, I am. I went too fast. It's the, not the right link? Moxie work session feedback? Uh, Teresa, is it clickable for you? Because it isn't for me. <laughs> I just copied it and pasted it in a new page. And, uh, and Excellent. I just put it as a link, too. So okay. thank you. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, Zoom always requires the HTTPS or it doesn't let you click on it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for attending. Good job, Alex. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Angie.